Good evening. I hope you've had a great day today. I hope you've been encouraged and uplifted today. And for a few moments this evening, I want us to focus on the fact that God is our Heavenly Father. And there are so many blessings that come along with the fact that He is indeed our Father. You know, one of the realities is that as we see in Scripture, God refers to Himself as our Father. And He does so so as to describe the kind of relationship that God wants to have with us. Listen to Jeremiah. It's chapter 31. Listen to verse 9. With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Then if we keep reading down toward the end of the chapters, verse 31 and following, the Bible says, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. And so again, there's this relationship that God desires to have with his people. And particularly here in Jeremiah 31, we're seeing the reality of the history of the people of God, the Hebrew people, the Israelites. But we're seeing the reality that, in fact, they disobeyed God. They broke their covenant with him. But God is going to renew that covenant. And he says there in verse 9, I'll bring them back, and I'm going to bring them back down a path that they won't stumble, that they won't fall. I am a father to them. He says. And so the reality is that God is our heavenly Father. He is a Father to us. And as His children, there are great privileges that come along with Him being our Father. Think, for instance, about Romans chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. It's there in the midst of His discussion about who God is or what God has done for us and will do for us and, and how we can't be separated from the love of God, the context of chapter 8, that we find in verses 16 and 17, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. And so Paul is very clear that we are children of God. As believers in Christ, as those who have been obedient uh, to the faith and to the gospel, we are children of God. And so, by extension then, he is our father. And because of that, the blessings of the inheritance, that we are heirs with Christ, uh, this is, a, this is a, an enormous blessing that I think all too often we fail to really understand. The truth is, eternal life and a heavenly home with God, our Heavenly Father, is only available through Christ. And because we are children of God, we are heirs, and we are in line for that inheritance. A few of the blessings that we see as God is our Father. We see Him being our provider. As a father provides for his family, for his children, so God provides for us. It's Acts chapter 17, verse 28, where we find Paul in Athens, and as he has addressed uh, the men that are gathered there, he, he's explaining to them about this unknown God, about how this unknown God to whom they have an idol is the one who created heaven and earth. He's the one that doesn't live in houses made by human hands. He's not served by man as though he needs us to give him anything. But rather, Paul explains to them, verses 
uh, verse 28 rather, that in him, in God, we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Again, if we are God's children, if we belong to him, then he is our father, and there are great blessings that come along with that. We are heirs of the inheritance or the promised home for eternity, and all of that is brought about through Christ. You know, it's easy for us to be convinced that we are self-sufficient. Oftentimes, we rely upon ourselves. We, we, we feel like we can accomplish things on our own strength or our own power, but the truth is we can only do things that God allows us to do and God gives us the strength to do. In him, we live and move and have our being because we are his offspring. It's important for us to not become self-sufficient, but rather to rely upon the strength that only God can provide. You know, God gave his son for us. And as I said a moment ago, all of those blessings of being a child of God, they're only available because God gave his son to redeem us. It's Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7 where Paul says, In him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. It's only through God's Son, the giving of God's Son, His redemptive work in Christ, that we are redeemed from our sins. And that's one of the blessings that comes along with being a child of God. As God is our Father, He also is not just our provider, but He looks out for our best interests. You know, God cares about us. He, he wants what's good for us. It's Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. There Moses says, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to, live, uh, to love him, rather, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. And those last three words are very important to this passage for your good. The things that God requires of us, the things that God asks of us are always for our good. What God wants for us is always best for us. And so we must see uh, with the eyes of God, allowing ourselves to know, in fact, that he has our best interests in mind. And when we put our trust in him, that frees us to, to live the way that God has called us to live. God has our best interests in mind. And because of that, we don't have to think in terms of self-sufficiency, but rather we think in terms, again, of the strength that God provides. God's our provider. He has our best interests in mind. And God loves us even when we are unlovable. John chapter 3, verse 16 is perhaps the most well-known verse in all of the Bible. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. God loves us even when we are unlovable. And one passage that comes to mind is Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. And in that passage, Paul is saying, listen, Christ died for us even when we were sinners, when we were ungodly. Christ died for us, and that's how God shows his love for us. God loves us even when we're unlovable. God doesn't love like we do. You know, God challenges us to love like he does, and we see that as John reveals to us in 1 John chapter 4. Listen to verse 8. John writes, Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And then verse 16 of that same chapter, John says, So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. And so God calls us to love like he loves, not to love like the world loves. Again, Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8 is where God shows us what love is, the giving of self. 
God gave his son for us that even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, when we were ungodly, when we were unlovable, God loved us. And God shows us what love is by giving us his son. So God provides for us. God has our best interests in mind. God loves us even when we're unlovable. And God is our refuge. As our heavenly father, he is our refuge. We see the psalmist say in Psalm 46, beginning in verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. God is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our help in time of need. He's our safe place. It's 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 3 and 4. It says, My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. I, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. God is our refuge as our heavenly Father. He is our refuge. So we know that whatever's coming, we know that whatever we face in life, the challenges, and even throughout 2020, this pandemic that we've been dealing with, and all that comes along with that, all of the hardships, all of the sorrow, all of the struggle, no matter what's happening, we know that God is there for us. He is our safe place. He is our refuge. He is the one that provides salvation for us. The truth is, God, as our Heavenly Father, offers something to all humanity. Because God is our Heavenly Father, and because God has given His Son for the world because He loves us, because of that, everyone has the opportunity to be a child of God. Not everyone will accept that opportunity, but the call is there, and the reality is there that we all have the opportunity to be children of God. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 27. Paul says, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as been baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. This is the offer that God gives. It's his son. And by putting Christ on in baptism, everyone has that opportunity to be a child of God. When we are obedient to the gospel, when we are baptized into Christ, we become a child of God and we become heirs with Christ. And we know for certain that our inheritance as children of God, as heirs with Christ, is that eternal home that God has waiting for us. He's our heavenly father and we praise him and we worship him, and we bring him glory because he's the one that loves us. He's the one that provides for us. He's the one that is our refuge. He has our best interests in mind, and everything that God wants for us is always best for us. We call him Father, and for good reason.